So we've dabbled now with a, a lot of ecological topics so far. We've introduced it uh, in our first video in the levels of study. We've talked about in our second video the idea of energy. Uh, in the third video we took it a step further with food webs and uh, trophic relationships. Now it's actually time to jump up uh, and, and look at our next largest level, if you will. Uh, and and time to uh, look at our, our next level of study and move up into one that's actually kind of interesting uh, in some of the dynamics and relationships, uh, the study of eco ecology in terms of populations. Uh, so we've got to start and, and think back to what we said in our first video, what a population actually is. Uh, remember we have, we have uh, if we were looking at this example here with these uh, strange, very strange looking amphibians, these uh, poisonous frogs um, and this would be an example uh, if you will of a population I remember a population is a group of individuals of the same species living in a defined area so we couldn't just say tree frogs we'd have to say whatever the species of tree frog is living in the Amazonian rainforest or living in one tree within that forest uh, so we have to define the population so as we study them as ecologists, we can we really are looking at m primarily three factors, three main factors, uh, and one of them, one of the key descriptors here, is geographic distribution. Like we just said, uh, where where do you find them? What's their range? Where do they live? Uh, I know this is a a range map. Um, of let's say a, uh, an aquatic organism, let's say it's some type of species of awesome amazing whale. And what we can see here is that shaded in the blue shows its worldwide distribution. We don't find them uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, we find them pretty much everywhere else though, huh? so it's pretty widespread. So this would be a very large geographic area, a geographic distribution. So that's one way we can describe them. The other way, and a very, very important way, which we'll look at a little later on, is the idea of density. Um, and that's the number of individuals, but per unit area. So in, we're not talking about just the number of individuals. Again, we're also concerned with the area. Uh, like, for example, little old Rhode Island, tiny estate, uh, actually has a very, very high population density. Our population is not extremely large, comparatively, uh, if we were to talk about, let's say, a Nevada. Uh, however, our density is, is very, very high. Um, and actually, this shows perfectly, speaking of the United States here, uh, you can see that um, color-coded, the darker colors on the scale have a higher density. Um, so being a little data enthusiast, if you look at that, uh, you should be able to, if you were to pause the video right now, um, take a look at that and, and see if you can come up with two or three quantitative statements or, or even qualitative statements that describe that because really this image is sort of almost like a graph if you will um, so see if you can come up with any um, summary statements about that see so, uh, hopefully we're able to make some statements like up here in the Northeast very high uh, density especially east of the Mississippi River here uh, over on this side has a higher density pretty much along the coastlines um, and we can see that in some areas we have really really uh, <laughs> basically uh, almost a non-existent density such a low um, population of individuals in certain areas but it kind of matches here if you think out in the desert uh, regions areas that are not heavily developed so that's another way uh, in the biology kingdom we can describe them uh, another one is is growth rate. We can monitor them over time. Um, how rapidly, how fast are they growing? Or and also keep in mind negative growth would decline. Uh, in this example here, we can see our world population. Uh, we're right around here, and if you look, it is massively, uh, or, or the curve it has a very steep slope. But we're we're developing. Uh, uh, quite the population here, and you can see it's changing, starting to really peak, and we're going to look at something along those lines in just a bit. So with that in mind, we'll piggyback off of that, what would actually affect a population's growth rate? What, what would cause it to change? What would cause it to go up? What would cause it to go down? Um, and really there are a couple of pretty simple, uh, and they're all closely related, uh, births, deaths, and also we've got to worry about uh, migration. Um, in terms of births, obviously that would add to the population. This, uh, oof, cows. Um, this newborn calf is is plus one. Our population has gone up. 
Uh, so that that's a, a kind of a given there. Deaths on the opposite hand would go down, obviously, and in this one is is unique uh, migration because you can have uh, a couple of different variations there. When you when you look at that, we could be talking about immigration, uh, individuals migrating into the environment. You can also do emigration, individuals migrating out of the environment. Um, so either way, just like births and deaths there, uh, they both would make the population decrease and increase accordingly. Um, and there can be factors that, that cause that as well. We've got to be careful with, um, with that too. Uh, so what would make it increase? Obviously, like we said, births and deaths here. Um, but in terms of migration, again, as we just said, uh, here's an example with a uh, population of fish, you could see that if we were concerned in monitoring, let's say, the Lake Saint-Pierre, oh mon dieu, uh, monitoring the population of fish, we would find that the population is huge in the fall due to migration. They migrate uh, up the river from Quebec City uh, to Montreal, and in the spring and the summer, they, they leave. They migrate to, to a different area in the river. So your population would change drastically. So we've got to be careful and really focus, um, or, or we cannot forget about migration. That's a big one. Um, again, with that. So uh, and another example here again, uh, these ugly beasts annually they migrate by the millions uh, in search of water over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds thousands of miles um, again there can be a lot of causes spawning maybe could cause you to migrate looking for food avoiding predators a lot of reasons why you would exhibit uh, migration so let's say we we're ecologists we're monitoring a population and we're curious about what's going to happen to them we can follow their growth and we realize that they actually have two main types of growth that we want to look at here to end with exponential growth and something a little more realistic called logistic growth so let's look at exponential growth um, if you think of of just in standard math here um, what you had learned in math, just the idea of exponents. Uh, 2 to the 1, that's obviously 2. 2 to the 2, 4. 2 to the 3, 2, 4, 6, e, okay. 2 to the 4, and so on and so on. You can see that you don't jump in even increments. Here we went up by 2. Here we didn't go up by 2, we went up by 4. So the power of exponents, you can jump in leaps and bounds. Um, and that idea of growth. So in, in that regard, this occurs when um, individuals will, will keep reproducing at a constant rate. There's no slowdown, which that doesn't sound that impressive and amazing. Um, but that will, in turn, if you think of it, cause the population to increase rapidly over time. Uh, and if we see that here, they, they start off, our population is growing at a decent rate, but the uh, the rate remains constant. Well, then why does it jump? Think of that you're, you're adding more individuals, so your population's growing in larger chunks, larger leaps and bounds. So you see this uh, really, really um, obvious curve here with exponential growth. You're, you're always going to see that large peak, like we saw with humans earlier on. Uh, for human population, we look like we're exhibiting exponential growth at this point in time, um, which is, is really not that surprising when you think of our intelligence, our health, uh, etc., our resources. Um, so this, again, it seems great, this idea, but you're usually only going to have this temporarily and under ideal conditions. Like, for example, if we had an area with unlimited resources, there were no caps on our food, our water, our space, etc. And usually when you have a low initial population, so you have a few founding um, individuals to start the population off and unlimited resources, everyone goes crazy and you have this crazy, crazy reproduction. Which again, here's uh, billions of, of humans here. Um, in this graph, they're comparing it to growth of bacterial cells, which exhibit the same growth. But you can see that we have we are growing clearly exponentially. We're over seven billion now, and and show no signs of slowing down. Uh, but to end with, we want to look at that exponential growth isn't really that realistic. Much more realistic, and uh, you'll find much more common in nature is something called logistic growth. And that's when a population will grow rapidly, but their growth will slow, stop, or even in some cases decrease or uh, fluctuate minimally up and down after an initial period of exponential growth. So here are three um, really, really good examples of 
of this exponential, uh, excuse me, of logistic growth. You can see in the first graph uh, over here, we have a single-celled organism, Paramecium caudatum, which you'll be doing a virtual activity with. This is a water flea, uh, Daphnia. Remember, we had graphed this guy in um, our data bombs, our practice initially in the year. And this one is for a uh, apparently a possessed beast. No, actually for a seals uh, in California, fur seals. And you can see that in each case, all of them follow uh, a basic line of best fit in the red here. Here with the uh, paramecium over here, it fits perfectly. Exponential growth, then you start to see a level off. Here we actually see a huge spike, and then it drops back down, but then it stays and fluctuates around here in this area. Again, it has leveled off, and looks like a, approximately the same thing with the seals. So these are three very, very different organisms. A single-celled organism that just floats around in water. Uh, this guy's also aquatic, but he's not single-celled. This guy's aquatic as well, but he's a large mammal. So the question is, well, what would, why? Why do they level off? Notice the time period varies um, from days to years, but, but really, why would they level off? What is causing this, this logistic growth pattern? And the nice thing is the answer is actually really, really easy for us. So this logistic growth, it's usually ultimately comes down to one, one word, one idea, and that's resources. Resource availability. How much food is available, water, space, a place to live, oxygen, light, depending on the organisms, which one they would want to, uh, what they would actually need. Uh, so no matter what this, this, uh, the resources that's causing this, we usually will see a general leveling off there, uh, and that is logistic growth. So uh, the term for this, this leveling off um, portion, is what's called the carrying capacity. Um, now that that makes it sound like something's being carried, and if you think about it, it's this this area, this ecosystem, is able to carry or support about this many individuals. That's about the max uh, at which we could have individuals surviving, and we don't see. Uh, huge problems because uh, if we we go back to our other example they remember that if we were to shoot above that now we're above the carrying capacity and and we actually have too many individuals maybe now there's not enough food there's not enough space there's not enough water so what will happen is they will die off a population dips down they could migrate they could leave for a number of reasons uh, and but now we're below the carrying capacity so hey there's enough food let's reproduce we'll go back up and they'll then continue to fluctuate around that point um, that's the idea of the carrying capacity now that carrying capacity also it's important to note can change that can fluctuate based on uh, if there were suddenly an influx of food there's more resources that would raise our carrying capacity so this number is uh, not set in stone. It can change given environmental conditions. So uh, again, it, it usually will fluctuate. This is a little more realistic. A deer population on this crazy sounding island. Uh, you can see they peak above, but it looks like the carrying capacity is right around a little less than 80 on that island, again, due to resources. So ultimately, what's going to cause all of that uh, that logistic growth and the dipping again it's it's competition and that could that competition could happen uh, in terms of resources but could happen between organisms of the same species it could happen between organisms of different species etc uh, it could be I'm trying to kill you and eat you predation <laughs> that's competition too many predators wiping out their prey will cause a dip in that uh, we could be fighting for mates there are not enough um, females to go around I know that sounds terrible but that's a case in in nature as well. These guys uh, fighting here, trying to look tough with their spindly little legs, um, but fighting over over a mate uh, would be a, a great example. Here, think about what are they competing for? These guys are actually growing on the surface and in cracks and rocks, competing for space and light and water. So there's competition there. That's going to affect the population as well. Um, so no matter where we look, you're going to find here's two guys of the same species fighting over food. You're going to find competition for resources, and that that will uh, in turn will dictate populations. So to end with the idea here with barnacles, something called competitive exclusion principle. They're competing for you've heard the term your niche. They're competing for space. We can only have so many barnacles here growing because there's 
only a set amount of space, a set amount of water, a set amount of food. If we wipe them out, more barnacles will go in. And we'll be looking at this in a lab in just a moment.